Today, I wanna to actually show you something a little bit different that a lot of us aren't talking about so much in blogging, and that is photography. Specifically, I'm gonna talk a little bit about product photography, and what I'm gonna show you may not apply to everybody, but I think it's gonna be, it's gonna give you some really, really useful stuff. But first, I gotta show you some fun things that I'm excited about that we've been working on. So, a little bit noisier in here, but a little while back, we bought this. You can see it's at work. That's because we needed to be able to engrave these. These are our plaques for our Project 24 full-time income finishers. But we decided instead of just having them generic, that we wanted to put people's names on them because that's way cooler. So we got this engraver so that we could do it. But since we have this engraver, it seems a shame to just have it sitting here all the time. So um, we started making some water bottles and it started with me buying a bunch of these. So here's a kind of maroon one. And I made one for each of my kids. They each have their own custom water bottle that they got to design, which was amazing. And then next thing I knew, I was like, I put our jujitsu emblem on my sons and I put it on my own red water bottle that I already had. And next thing I knew, everybody wanted one. <laughs> so I have a bunch of people from the gym that are literally asking me to make these. So I, I kind of turned it into a little bit of a side hustle. We're making one now specifically so that we can take photos and put them up on a website. So today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about product photography. Now you can use this for affiliate products, especially now because if you don't know this, Amazon used to have this feature where it would give you an embed code for literally product photos from Amazon that were approved for affiliates to use. And so people put these embed codes all over their websites so that they would be like following the rules and pulling in these photos from Amazon the right way. You're not allowed to just save the images from Amazon and post them on your website. That'll get you kicked out and it's a copyright violation. All of a sudden, not that long ago, Amazon comes out and says, hey, guess what? That tool's going away and it's gone now. You can't even get those anymore. And all those uh, image links, they're all broken. So we have to take our own pictures of, photo of, of the products that we wanna talk about which I think is better, by the way, because it kind of helps guarantee you actually have the product you're recommending. So let me show you a way to go about this. Now, we normally just want to use pro uh, photos that just don't seem overly professional because we're bloggers, right? If it seems like you're some pro photographer, it's going to feel like a stock photo. But there are situations where being able to take a high quality product photo is a good thing. Let me show you this setup that we've got going on. Now, we decided it was time to take some high quality product photos, not because the water bottles really needed it, but we wanted to do something a little bit better for this. So here's another cool project that we've been working on. We're working with this uh, business, ClearPath. We've actually partnered together and I'm helping them with their internet marketing. They are sold on content and uh, they're sold on affiliate marketing. Uh, we're calling it ambassadors rather than affiliates, but it's the same thing. Because we happen to have people in our office, Andrea, who literally has a background in product photography, we said we could take some pictures for them. So I have early product off of the line that we decided we needed to take some pictures of. So here is the setup. Okay, you don't have to do exactly this. This looks pretty crazy and a little bit professional. You can keep it a lot simpler than this, but this is what we set up. And I wanna show you the elements of it so that you can apply this to your own situation. First thing that we did was set up a backdrop. This is just white craft paper, it's on a roll. Um, I do have a light stand with a bar that goes between them and so or a couple of light stands. And so the roll fit on it perfectly, but really you could use a broom handle um, and just holding it up with a couple of things and then put a roll of craft paper on there. This is just inexpensive white craft paper. Now this works perfectly because whether or not you can tell from because of the lighting, um, there's already some creases in there. As you use it, it's gonna start to get creased and it's gonna start to get a little bit dirty. And so it's nice to be able to have your uh, backdrop be something that you can just dispose of and pull off a little bit more. So because we don't wanna be wasters. Um, my plan here is to cut off a piece, take it home, let my kids color all over it. I got five kids at home. Um, but then I can just pull out a little bit more, uh, just as needed, and we can take 
some more pictures. So we've got a solid white backdrop. Now you may want a different color or something, but for a lot of product imagery, it's nice to be able to have it look like the product is like there alone, kind of in white space with a little bit of shadow. Okay, so there's the backdrop. Next thing we've got here is kind of our main light. We have a light from the front. It's a little bit off center from the camera, which is exactly how we want it. It's nice to get a little bit of shadow. It makes it look like it's not just a fake computer generated image and it makes it feel more real. We expect there to be shadows when there's light and when there's objects. Now this is pretty bright um, and I'll explain a little bit the reason for that here in a couple of minutes. So we have a bright light here from the front. You could probably get away with just using whatever light you're using if you're taking uh, any video. You could probably use a softbox, but get the brightest bulbs in it you can. Next is we have a light over there on the side. That light down there is a little low and notice how he's using these. These are just, they're part of a five in one reflector, but it's obviously not a reflector, right? Those are just diffusing the light so that it softens it. So it's not quite so harsh. That light from the side is first of all, filling things in so we don't get quite as harsh of shadows. The other thing that it's doing is putting just a little bit of an edge. It sharpens the edge of the product makes it look pretty cool. We also do have that light up there in the corner. That's a light that's always in here, uh, but we're using it a little bit as well. It's nice to have a little bit of overhead light, again, to help kind of fill in some of the shadow so it's not quite so harsh. Uh, Andrea recommended uh, actually like having it straight above, <laughs> um, but it should be a lot dimmer than your main light from the front. Same with the hair light, the side light should be quite a bit dimmer. This one in the front is by far the brightest. All right, let's just talk briefly about camera settings. I said that we have it very bright for a reason. That's because we wanna shoot with a very small aperture, which means if you have a camera that has the f-stop, it means a high number, okay? The higher that number, the smaller the little aperture hole, which means less light is getting in. But it also means that your depth of field is deeper, so everything is going to be crisply in focus. So for these photos that we're going to take here in just a second, I'm using an f-stop of nine, but Andrea says she often shoots up at like f20 if she can have bright enough lights. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have a fairly fast shutter speed. I'm going to set it over to one over 200. That means one 200th of a second is how long that shutter stays open. It's also going to make it a little bit dark, but it's going to Make it so that when we take that picture, it's quick, so it's crisp. Now the ISO, we're gonna set to wherever it needs to be now to get the color exactly how we want it. That is the exposure triangle. Those are the three corners. Between those three things, we can control a lot of things, but all of them have to be in balance to get the light exactly how we want it, okay? Let's talk about one more thing, and that is with our lens. I'm using my Sony A60 or Alpha 6600s, and I'm using them with uh, the lens that I'm using for taking these pictures is actually a Tamron 17 to 70 millimeter lens. It goes down to an F 2.8, but we're not going that low on our f-stop anyway, so that doesn't really matter. The reason I want a lens like that though, that will zoom and zoom in pretty far. Another thing I learned from Andrea is that we actually want it zoomed in. She said to set it up higher, like 50 millimeters or something like that, which means I actually need to back the camera away a bit. It's amazing how different it looks. I could bring the camera close, and use our normal 16 millimeter lenses that don't have any sort of zoom. In doing that, it would look one way. And then if I could back the camera away and do a zoom so that the object looks the same size, it looks different and it looks better. So here is your ideal setup. Some good lights, whatever you can get though in your price range, having a good one from the front, a little bit off center, one from the side, and maybe one from on top. That's kind of your ideal setup. But if you're gonna have all three of those, you need to be able to adjust the brightness so that the one in the front is brighter than the others. We're gonna have our camera set with the f-stop pretty high. Um, she said go no longer lower than eight in your f-stop number. And then the last thing was just zoom in. Um, so there you have it. Now I wanna go ahead and take a picture with this exact setup. And I wanna show you what that picture looks like. So we're gonna take a picture of this bag right here. All right. Now I have the bag actually turned slightly away, just, just barely turning away from us like that. And it's just a more interesting image. I could take it straight on and that'd be just fine, but I just wanted something that looked a little bit more interesting. So that's what we're gonna do. Then I'm just gonna take a picture. All right, next I wanna do this water bottle and we're gonna see if this is any different. 
All right. And there we go. Right here on the screen, I'm gonna show you what these pictures look like raw, exactly as they are. But then we're gonna go through the next step, which is we're gonna do a little bit of, of coloring and just a little bit to process those images to make them look even better. All right, now we're at the computer and I'm gonna show you just a little bit of what I could do to kind of touch this up. We're not gonna do a ton here. We're gonna to try to keep it fairly simple. I'm using Photoshop because I have it. You're gonna be able to do a lot of this stuff in really any photo editing software and you can even, there's all sorts of free stuff out there. But I have Photoshop, so this is it. And the cool thing is, is my camera took this photo in a raw format. So the file size is, it's got a raw and a JPEG format. The JPEG is already compressed. The raw format is about five times the file size, but it stores a lot more data, which gives me a little more room to work with on like coloring and lighting and stuff. So when I open that raw file here in Photoshop, it gives me a little bit of room to play around. We could also do this in Lightroom. I'm doing it here in Photoshop because I'm also gonna do some touching up while I'm at it, okay? So I'm gonna click here. This is gonna give me some presets. Now here, one of the presets here is under subject and there's all these different presets. So food, this first one here, notice how it lightened it up a little bit. So here's as it is, that's if I select this first preset. That's pretty good. I like that a little bit better. That one brightened it up even more, but it made it kind of grainy. See that? That one kind of darkened everything. Just going through these. These are all just kind of different ways. I mean, if I wanted something that looked kind of vintage, I'm gonna go with this first one. So some things I could do, I could say, you know what? I want a little bit lighter, a little bit brighter. If I come down here and let's lighten up the highlights a little bit. So you see how that white's just getting a little bit lighter? I can make it really light, but that's not the same thing as just like raising the exposure. See, I make everything really light. If I just go here and just raise up the highlights a bit, then all the lighter stuff is gonna get brighter or lighter. Um, here I can do the same thing with the lights and that's gonna pick up even more than just the highlights. I can make the shadows a little bit darker. So not just all the dark stuff, but all the shadows. So that's pretty cool. I like that a little bit. Let's go here. There's some other things. Let's go ahead and soften the texture a little bit. I don't wanna go too much. I don't want it to start looking really hazy. Let's go ahead and take the blacks and kind of darken the blacks just a little bit more. Make the whites just a little wider. Now notice you can see here a lot better, better than when I first took the photo, just how crinkled up my bag is. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to heal some of these little spots. So there's the healing tool and this one is a content aware tool. So it's gonna try to heal it based on what's around it. So look at that, it took some of that wrinkle out of there. I don't wanna overdo it here, but a little bit of healing I think is gonna go a long way. You know, I'm gonna go back here to kind of the lighting and color here. Let's see what happens if I just raise up the vibrance just a little bit. See that? I can make it really vibrant. I think that looks good for what I'm doing here. And really, that looks pretty great. So I'm gonna export this. And now here are my two pictures side by side. And frankly, I think that looks pretty good. Again, especially given that I was using a wrinkled up bag. The point here isn't to focus on perfection or taking the best photos or being professional. The idea here is that you can take an imperfect setup. You can take very basic lighting. Use a lamp if that's what you have, right? You can use what's available to you, but just knowing some of these basic principles that we've shown you in this video, you're gonna be able to take much better photos of products and all sorts of things. Even if you're not trying to go for like a studio look like this, this is something like you would see on an Amazon product listing. But maybe you're going for something that looks a little bit more real world. Still, these principles of photography are gonna make those real looking shots just look a lot better. The reality is, is we want everything to feel genuine and authentic. We want our photos to feel real. We don't necessarily want them to look studio quality, but there's real and then there's real. If like my desk right now is a perfect example. You're looking at this video and you see me right here and I'm a guy with some lights behind me and a nice light on me and everything looks pretty good. I mean, maybe except this part. But if you were to actually be in my office, I just gotta take a little video clip. This is actually really embarrassing. There you are, here I am, okay? Check this out, this is my, there's my soda. I got some gum here. I got all these like hand exercise tool things, some peanuts. 
Look at my chair over there. Look at the, I got exercise bands on the floor. I've got mail here. This is a mess. But you wouldn't know that looking at this, but does that make this look any less authentic? We wanna make real still look pretty good. And that's hopefully what these skills are gonna help you be able to do. Most importantly, get out there and make content. Let's just try to make sure that we're making our content as helpful as we possibly can. And honestly, I think that's gonna mean including a lot more good media in our blog posts, which may mean some video content, but also it's gonna mean taking really good pictures that do a better job of illustrating the points we're trying to make in our blog post not just having pictures for the sake of having pictures. That's it for today. I hope to see you in our next video where we'll continue to talk about how you're gonna make your content substantially better so that it continues to do incredibly well in search. And so it helps people in a way that earns you a really good income. We'll see you there.